So, you've, you've uh, worked with some of the great writers, great directors, great producers. Mr. Sorkin brings, I would imagine, a special challenge for any actor because of the quality of the writing. How do you rise to that challenge? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's for somebody else to say, but, uh, but that it is a challenge. It is a challenge. Is it, it, it nerve-wracking? Sure. Sure, I mean, it wouldn't be worth getting out of bed for if it wasn't a little bit nerve-wracking. It's, it's, uh... Aaron writes the music of American speech absolutely perfectly, and it is not perfectly obvious when you read it what the music is. <laughs> so... <laughs> so you get this, uh, you get this wonderful thing that you can do with yourself all day long for as many days as you are allocated to it, of trying to find all the music that's in it. And are you that's allowed great, to do any great of your... fun. Can you do any of your own composing? Or is it basically... It's you that can, way but or... you will be sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly because it dead ends you, because there is a music in it. So you... If you... And sometimes, you know, it has happened that you have had to speak before you knew what the music was. But I mean, does anybody on the panel, have any of you tried improvising? Like improvising? improvising. <laughs> <laughs> no. Does the mere word bring horror to you at this? Uh, yeah. No. No, we don't improvise. No. Aaron, do you have a, do you have a rule? It's, it, you shall not improvise? I, I think everyone here will agree, encourage the, the <laughs> cast. <laughs> The script is merely a jumping off place, okay? The script is a suggestion, and I encourage everyone I'm to... I'm going to remind you of that. <laughs> I'm on Monday. It's... I won the comma, it's off. <laughs> I will say, Aaron, you know, it is comma for comma, period for period. However, he is completely open, and this is where, and Sam is right, you will feel very sorry and silly, as soon as it's over, you go, you're like, um, and I've done this, uh, and I'm like, hey, Aaron, um, do you think that maybe this sounds better? And he's like, okay, and he's so cool about it. He's like, yeah, let's work it out. Let's, okay, let's talk. And then as you start to do it, then you see other people around you, the other actors start to go, mm. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and Aaron goes, well, why don't you try it like this? And then, then you, you're like, oh, that does work. You're like, oh, that's exactly what was on the page. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you learn, I learn quickly. Um, <laughs> This is not an improv. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, uh, working with, with Aaron is obviously a fantastic experience, I would imagine. But for you, what was the main purpose of the newsroom? What were you trying to achieve with it? Many people, when they criticised it, good or bad, believed there was a, a message you were trying to get over. Was that really true? Or was it, as Aaron told me when he came on my show, really, it's entertainment? Well, it is entertainment. And I feel like that, that word gets abused a lot. Um, but there's no, there's no message to the show. But I do think that there, I mean, Aaron has a romantic idea of what, it's a slightly utopian vision of what news could be. And our, my job in particular was making sure we got all the details right so that all the trappings, all the sets, all the performances, all the mechanics, all the incredible technological uh, wizardry we have to pull off to create a live newscast was 100% accurate. So it has the look and the feel of total verisimilitude, but that doesn't mean it's a documentary. And that's where I think some people get confused because it looks like news, it sounds like news, the set feels like news, so they think that we're just trying to recreate the news, but we're not. There, there's something more being said.